Congressman, great to have you with us. And let's start with the call for a second special counsel. Uh, your thoughts about how likely it is that resolution will influence the outcome. I hope it does, Lou. I mean, think about it. You have a situation where, as you suggested, yes, DOJ, FBI are going to be under the microscope and have been, but I don't think it was limited to the FBI. I mean, I want to know people like John Brennan at the CIA, what, if any, the involvement that institution had uh, with some of these individuals, because I don't think it was all just cooked up in one agency. So having a special counsel, they'll have the authority to be able to investigate the potential criminal offenses and then hold people accountable, subpoena people, whatever. An inspector general doesn't have the ability to subpoena witnesses outside the Department of Justice. To me, that means even though it could do some things, mm -hmm. it will not be sufficient for what we need. And, and again, who will be appointing that second special counsel? And, and to what degree does that constrain your enthusiasm for a second special counsel? It, well, it should be Jeff Sessions. There's no reason that he should be recused about any of the stuff involving the department's conduct. Uh, so I think he can do it. Uh, we tried to get him to do it a couple months ago, as you remember. Right. I mean, we Absolutely. were all pushing for it. He identified Huber. He didn't call him a special counsel. He said Huber's going to look into some of this stuff. The problem, Lou, I haven't heard anything from Huber. I mean, we sent a criminal referral about a month and a half ago identifying a lot of the offenses that, that, that may have been uh, committed. And we've gotten no response from Huber, no response from Sessions yet. So that's why I think that it is time to do this. Yeah, it's... It the, the attorney general is now the mystery man uh, of this entire administration, perhaps. Uh, for, I, I can't even think of a, a historical figure who would even approximate the ambiguity uh, of this, uh, this attorney general, Jeff Sessions. Uh, and to, for him to not be acting, not responding to committees, uh, mo moving a referral to, toward the Justice Department is outrageous. And the thing is, Lou, is, you know, I, I think he should reevaluate his recusal to begin with. I mean, the fact of the matter is, a lot of this stuff, there's not, they're not really serious about collusion anymore. They're not serious about some of the campaign stuff. So he should not be recused from, say, whether Comey's firing represented obstruction of justice. Um, Rosenstein really is the one that should be recused from that. Rosenstein wrote the memo, say, to fire Comey, and now he's overseeing a special counsel about it. So I think Sessions should step up. Uh, and choosing the special some counsel, of this. the individual special counsel, Robert Mueller himself. After meeting with the president about potentially being the FBI director again, and then Rod follows him out the, the door and says, hey, you want to be a special counsel? So, yeah, that thing. So I think if Sessions would take control and, and get back into the game, at least to a certain extent, you know, that could perhaps go a long way to alleviating some of these problems. Should we infer anything that uh, Ed, uh, Callahan will be uh, representing the FBI, uh, the Department of Justice, rather, in that meeting with FBI director? Uh, Christopher Ray and with uh, NDI, uh, Dan Coates and Trey Gowdy and uh, Devin Nunes. I don't know, but I think at the end of the day, somebody like Rosenstein, I think, should be recused from some of this because even if he didn't do anything wrong, he did sign a FISA warrant. Uh, and so some of what he knew could be at issue mm -hmm. here. So I think having somebody else look over this, mm -hmm. I think, is good. But here's the thing, Lou, you know, they're going to be some type of production. But as we've seen, they just don't come clean with everything. So I'm hoping that this is the final straw and they mm -hmm. finally give the goods to Nunes and Gowdy. But my fear is, is that Nunes is going to have to send a letter, you know, next week. And we're kind of at this again. So let's let's bring this home for a guys, soft landing. When do you guys get mad? When do you decide that you've been pushed around by the department and the agency over which you have oversight and actually uh, begin to impeach uh, and to uh, cite for contempt uh, these arrogant uh, and obviously politically corrupt officials who make up the majority, it seems, of the leadership of the FBI and the Department of Justice? Oh, six months ago. I mean, we, you know, I've been saying for six months identify what Congress is entitled to, what we need. 
and then set a deadline, and then the next day set a contempt hearing so that they know if the documents aren't turned over, then we just proceed the next day to hold you in contempt. If you're not willing to use those powers, then you end up getting the, the trickle here, trickle there, stonewall here, stonewall there. So yes, I think, we, I think we should use those, and hopefully we're at the point now where we are going to get all the information about anybody who may have been trying uh, to, to, to keep tabs on the Trump campaign at government uh, request. You know, keeping, uh, keeping tabs on them, Trey Gowdy is a lame duck. He's leaving. Uh, he's a guy who not, in, in not a single committee that he served on has accomplished anything uh, investigatively. Uh, and now he's uh, suddenly, Devin Nunes is uh, uh, in a buddy system with him. Uh, what is the point of that when Nunes has been on the point of the spear leading the way uh, in investigating uh, this rampant corruption uh, throughout the uh, Obama agencies and, and years. Because if there's going to just be a limited number of people and it would just be Devin going in on his own, then he comes out and I just think you need to have somebody else there. There are only a handful of committee chairmen who have any type of jurisdiction over this. So I think it's good that Devin's bringing somebody else in there because, as you said, I mean, he's been leading on this stuff for months yep. and he's been taking a lot of daggers. I mean, when you, when you stand up and you're actually trying to get the facts, the media, the Democrats, I mean, boom, boom, boom. They try to kneecap him every step of the way. So why haven't we heard from the Speaker of the House? Why hasn't he stood up and say, said, we're going to introduce a resolution supporting this president? Uh, against the the arrogant, corrupt uh, charges and the uh, just absolutely uh, absurd special counsel witch hunt that has gone on. Why hasn't he done that? Why hasn't the conference stood up for this president? Why haven't they said enough is enough? Well, here's the thing, I mean, Lou, the entire I... conference. No, I mean, we, it's, I mean, you've had a handful of us, really, yes, I mean, absolutely. when you think about it. But here, here's what I think. You know, as you said, Speaker Ryan's a lame duck. There's other people who want that job. And I would recommend for them, if you want to be the speaker after Speaker Ryan, you know, you need to be heard now. You need to stand up and you need to be clear. Oh, Put can... up or shut up on the collusion. If not, then we need to move on as a country. And I think if they're willing to say that, guess what? That's going to be the person that our grassroots are going to want to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, the Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows has been uh, outspoken uh, in, in moving ahead on this issue. Uh, Jim Jordan as well, yourself, of course, uh, from, uh, from this summer on. But why isn't there's some clear statement here about who the Freedom Caucus wants uh, as speaker. And why isn't there Paul Gosar, your colleague, uh, a Republican colleague from Arizona, saying point blank, uh, Ryan needs to step down. Why does that keep falling on deaf ears in your conference? Well, there, there is a movement uh, across the grassroots for Jim Jordan, who, I mean, you know, Jim is as tough as they come. And so there, there are people who, who, who are trying to push for that. In terms of the timing of how this works, I do hear a lot of different rumblings about, you know, well, we can't wait for the end. So I don't know how that's going to play out. But I, I do say there are rumblings across the conference just about, you know, the situation that, that we find ourselves in now.